This lesson will conclude section 4.1 from the textbook and finish going over functions. In this case, we are going to talk about what happens when we want to add, subtract, multiply, or divide functions. And in this case, we're given f is 5 minus 2t plus t squared, and g is t squared minus 4t plus 4. In this case, we want to add the two functions together, which happens sometimes. If you've got two things that are related, for instance, you're finding two different areas of um, two different objects, and then you want to add these two areas together, and you have the functions for them, then this would be an example where you might want to add things together. So in this case, you would say, okay, f of t is 5 minus 2t plus t squared. And then we are adding to that t squared minus 4t plus 4. Now, when we're adding, the parentheses aren't necessary, but it's good to just kind of remember that the first three were grouped together originally, and the last three were grouped together originally. But since it's plus, it's not as big a deal to have these parentheses. It's a much bigger deal when you've got subtraction, like in the next example. So in this case, if you combine like terms, uh, let's look at descending order. So t squared plus t squared is going to be 2t squared. You got a negative 2t and a negative 4t is negative 6t. And a 5 and a 4 is going to be 9. So like I said, for this next example, it's subtraction. So we have to be careful and make sure we include our parentheses. So if we go with g of t first, in this case, we also have to be careful that we put them in the correct order. We get t squared minus 4t plus 4. And then we are subtracting off 5 minus 2t plus t squared. So the important thing about these parentheses is that all of these last three terms need to get their signs changed. So we end up with t squared minus 4t plus 4. And then if we distribute this negative to all three of these, you end up with minus 5 plus 2t and minus t squared. And this is one of the cases where I see the most mistakes is people forgetting to distribute that negative to everything. And then you end up with the wrong signs and combining things inappropriately and you end up with the wrong answer. So please make sure that you remember your parentheses for this second set because we are subtracting and that you remember to distribute the negative to all three of those. If we simplify our last step, we end up with t squared minus t squared. So if you had forgotten to distribute that negative, those wouldn't have subtracted to be zero. Then we end up with negative 4t and positive 2t. So this ends up being negative 2t. And 4 minus 5 ends up being negative 1. We can also look at multiplying and dividing functions as long as we're not dividing by 0. If you look at this example, uh, we want to multiply these two together. So f was 5 minus 2t plus t squared. And g was t squared minus 4t plus 4. And in this case, we just have to go through and distribute everything. So we get 5 t squared minus 20 t plus 20 if you distribute the 5 to everything in the second set of parentheses. Then if you distribute the negative 2, you end up with negative 2 t cubed uh, plus 8 t squared and minus 8 t. And then the last term, the t squared, if you distribute that, you end up with plus t to the fourth minus 4t cubed and plus 4t squared. So again, we can combine some like terms, put things in descending order, and you end up with t to the fourth. You've got a negative 2t cubed and a negative 4t cubed, which is going to be negative 6t cubed. You've got a 5t squared, and again, I'm going to kind of underline these so we know we've taken care of them. Uh, we've got a 5t squared and 8t squared, which is 13. And then we have another 4, which is 17 t squared. Then we have a negative 20 and a negative 8, so negative 28 t and a plus 20. So this last example that we have here is similar to the previous example, example 11. Uh, we're not actually combining the functions together, we're just plugging in a sum into one of the given functions, and this is very important when you get into calculus. You will see this a lot. So in this case, 
you have g of t plus h. So anywhere we see t, we are plugging in t plus h. So we get t plus h quantity squared minus 4 times the quantity t plus h plus 4. And again, we need to make sure that we square this properly. So we're going to multiply t plus h times t plus h, which is t squared plus 2th plus h squared. Distribute the 4, so we have minus 4t minus 4h. Make sure that minus goes with it. And a plus 4. And in this case, we can't simplify any further. There's no like terms. So that's all we have for that example. Right here is a definition of pretty much what we were just doing, and it's a way to kind of simplify the notation. Instead of writing out f of x plus g of x, we can write f plus g of x. Instead of writing f of x times g of x, we can write f times g of x. And instead of writing f of x divided by g of x, we can write f divided by g of x. So again, it's the same process that we were doing in example 12. The only difference is it's just an abbreviated notation. So let's try some examples. So f plus g, all this is saying is that we add these two functions together. So we have x squared plus 3 plus 2x minus 1. Again, if we simplify, we end up with x squared plus 2x, and then 3 minus 1 is going to be plus 2. If we were to want to multiply these together, we would say, okay, we've got x squared plus 3 times 2x minus 1. And again, if we distribute or FOIL, we get 2x cubed minus x squared plus 6x minus 3. And that doesn't simplify any further. That's as far as it goes. The other nice thing about this notation is that if you say f plus g of 3, and we already found f plus g of x, all we have to do is plug in 3 to the answer we got here. So in this case, we just have 3 squared plus 2 times 3 plus 2, because we can plug in to our equation that we found, our simplified function that we found of f plus g. So in this case, we end up with 9 plus 6 plus 2, or 17. If we haven't actually found the function um, in terms of x, we can just go through and evaluate the function independently at a given point. So that would be examples d and e. In this case, we've got f divided by g. And again, we can't divide by 0, so be careful if that happens. In this case, if we plug in 1 to f, we get 1 squared plus 3. If we plug in 1 to g, we get 2 times 1 minus 1. So on top we get 1 plus 3, and in the bottom we get 2 minus 1. So the top we get 4, and the bottom we get 1, and we just end up with 4. So I want you to pause the video for a second, try example E, and see if you end up with the same answer when you resume the video. So for this last example, if you plug in 1 half or 0.5, f is going to be 0.5 squared plus 3. The denominator g is going to be 2 times 0.5 minus 1. So your numerator, 0.5 squared, is 0.25 plus 3. And in the denominator, 0.5 times 2 is 1 minus 1. So you end up with 3.25 over 0. And like I said, we can't divide by 0. It's undefined. So in this case, this is undefined. Anytime we're dividing by 0, the function is undefined. So we have one more example here. I want you to pause the video and complete this example and then resume the video and see if you get the same answers. So if you worked through all of these examples, you should have come up with the following answers. For the first one, you should have gotten x cubed minus 4x plus 9. For the second, you should have gotten x cubed minus 6x plus 9. Again, the difference between adding and subtracting the functions. C, you should have gotten x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 9x 
D, if you expanded everything out and divided each piece individually, again, reviewing things from chapter one and division of polynomials, you would have ended up with x squared minus five plus nine over x. For E, we already found F minus G in part B. So we can just plug in there, which was the x cubed minus six x plus nine. So we get zero cubed minus six times zero plus nine, which is just nine. And for F, and for F, we can plug into C. So we end up with two to the fourth minus five times two squared plus nine times two, which is 16 minus five times four plus 18, which just comes out to be 14. We're gonna do one last example together, and this one involves some fractions to begin with. So f of x is 1 plus 1 over x, and g of x is 1 over x. If we're going to add these together, we end up with 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x. And in this case, the 1s can't really combine with anything, but this 1 over x plus 1 over x has a common denominator already, so we can combine those, and we end up with 2 over x. Now, if we wanted to find a total combined answer, then, then we could find the common denominator, which in this case is x. So we multiply 1 by x over x, we get x over x. So x plus 2 over x is our combined answer if we wanted it all together, or you could have left it as 1 plus 2 over x. If you're subtracting in this case, you would have 1 plus, we're plugging in 2 as well, so we've got 1 plus 1 half minus 1 half. And depending on how you group things or look at this, this is really 1 plus 1 half minus 1 half, which is 1. Or you could have said 1 and a half minus 1 half, which is 1. For f times g, we get 1 plus 1 over x times 1 over x. So if we distribute this, we end up with 1 over x. And if we distribute to the next, the second piece, we end up with 1 over x squared. Again, if we wanted to get a common denominator and combine these, you would have ended up with x plus 1 over x squared. Now that we found this, and again, this is a negative 1. I apologize, the negatives don't always show up. If we wanted to plug in a negative 1 to our function, then we would get negative 1 plus 1 over negative 1 squared, which comes out to be 0 over 1, which is just 0. Anytime 0 in, in the top, that's fine. That just means you've got 0 divided by whatever number. That's fine. That's 0. It's when we're dividing by 0 and it's in the denominator that we have an issue. So let's try this last example and see if we can simplify. f divided by g. So in this case, f is 1 plus 1 over x, and g is just 1 over x. So again, we've got a couple different ways we can go about simplifying this, uh, one of which is to just find the common denominator and multiply the whole thing through, which is fine. Uh, another way is to combine the like terms in the numerator to get a um, just one single fraction and then multiply by the reciprocal. It's a bit easier, I think, to just multiply by the common denominator, which in this case is x, because there's an x here, there's an x here, nothing else. So if we distribute that, then we get x times 1 is x. x times 1 over x is just 1 because they would cancel. And same thing here, 1 over x times x is just 1. So this just simplifies to be x plus 1. This concludes the video for 4.1. So go on to the online homework assignment and complete that and then look at the video for 4.2.